said by Jesus our Lord himself. Dear friends in Christ and lovely children of Mary, many a time we run to our mother when we are sick and have no hope of living because we know she is our best intercessor to Jesus. Today we shall recall and meditate on day 20 of the October Marian month on such a wonderful title, Mary, Health of the Sick. There is silence in the Gospels about most of the details of her life, only those being told which concern the vital facts of her cooperation in the plan of incarnation. So much is told, however, that we know her character, the fundamental principle of which was her dedication to duty. She did her duty as a daughter, as a wife, and as a mother. Every one of these relationships demanded that she serve as an angel of mercy. St. Joseph is the patron of the dying because Jesus and Mary sat by his sick bed, his death bed. Our Lady was well used to the sick bed, the death bed. Mary, as a legend says, even wetted his parched lips, smoothed his pillow, kept vigil through the night, folded his hands and closed his eyes. We could wonder if it is in memory of that that she is first called health of the sick, that her love followed Joseph to the grave and after. Her parents, Joachim and Anne, took good care of their heaven-sent child. It was but a fair return that she should take care of them when already old, as when she was born. It is by no stretch of imagination for us to see Mary waiting hand and foot on the old couple sitting by their sick bed and folding their hands in death. In calling Mary health of the sick, we do not in any way relegate the importance of our Saviour Christ who brings true health. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus cured and not only healed physical ailments, but also healed souls. Our Lady, as his pre-eminent disciple, shares most closely in this mission of her son as the co-redemptrix, but she is also, through her immaculate conception and glorious assumption, the shining example of the healing and restoration offered through Christ. She stands as a sign of hope for the sick who call upon her. She has suffered through her sorrows and shared in the mystery of pain in a unique and special way that can rarely be understood by us human beings, but that allows her to better understand our pain and suffering. Friends, it is through this healing ministry that we see Christ, as Pius XII said, a vision of the div divine Redeemer himself. It is the law of love of neighbor of which Jesus gave us the supreme example. Hence, with this great incentive, Christians always have had a special love for the sick. The corporal works of mercy, as well as the spiritual, have always been a special mark of Christianity. There were many hospitals for the sick, for the orphans, 
for the foundlings, the poor, the aged and the sick pilgrims. Many confraternities and orders were founded just for the care of the sick. And Mary herself went to serve her cousin Elizabeth even though she had conceived Jesus in her womb and had to travel a very long distance. It is an interesting item that the first hospital in America was established before 1524 in the city of Mexico and was called the Hospital of the Immaculate Conception, a tribute to Our Lady as the health of the sick. While on earth, Mother Mary was ever kind to the sick. She had not ceased to help them now that she is in heaven. When little flower St. Teresa was a little girl, she was given up for dead, but the statue of the Blessed Virgin smiled upon her and she was instantly restored to health in order to work out her life of extraordinary sanctity. In that instance, Mary was, as St. Ephraim calls her, the joy of the sick. We are all familiar with Our Lady of Health who has appeared to the shepherd boy and a milkman in Velangani, in Nagapattinam, in Tamil Nadu. There are tens of thousands of miracles of healing every year and I'm sure many of us have received healing in times of distress or ill health. There is an old Irish prayer that runs, O Lady, physician of the most miserable diseases, behold the many ulcers of my soul. So, since Simon the Stock called her medicine of sinners, and as Saint Ephraim called her, robust health for those who have recourse to her. That is our ever building confidence in her as we pray the ancient prayer. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. An old Irish poem runs, there is no bound or rather hound in fleetness nor in chase north wind or rapid river as quick as the mother of Christ to the bed of death. In his prayer, our beloved Holy Father Pope Francis calls Mary health of the sick, adding that she had kept her faith firm as she stood near the cross while Jesus suffered on the cross. Pope Francis said, we seek refuge under Our Lady's protection, knowing that she will help us conform ourselves to the Father's will. 75 year, years later, after Pope Pius XII, Pope Francis asked and implored the Virgin Mary at the statue of the Divine Love Sanctuary to watch over the world in this current moment of crisis and even composed a prayer to her for protection against the coronavirus pandemic. Let the prayer on our lips always be. Holy Mary, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. She will save us from the wrath of God and bring us back to eternal life. What a lovely mother, so precious and loving and so merciful as our mother who is health of the sick. Praise be Jesus, our beloved Saviour. Ave Maria. Amen.